Last time on the Microflash Build Reports, I went through the process of building two identical frames. Today, I am giving them matching paint jobs. Just ignore where the word top is kind of seeing through right here. No, don't give a close up. <sighs> So welcome everybody. If you're new here, let me introduce myself. I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rocker Robotics. And like I said in the intro, we're giving our two frames matching paint jobs because, well, this is the primary frame right here. This is the spare parts backup frame. So it would be nice as this thing gets trashed in combat that the spare parts more or less look close enough to the actual frame so the parts match and, you know, it just looks nice. You know, why not? <laughs> so in order to do that, we need to create some templates for the paint job. And because I want to try to do things as complex as possible, we're using 3D printing. <laughs> so these are two little templates that actually fit over the shape of the robot. And they're the templates for doing the various stripes, as you see on the robots here, the robot frames anyway. Enough explanation out of the way. Let's get to the build process. So the first step here, you can actually skip if you've already got a nice 3D model of your robot because, well, you can, you can build your 3D templates off that 3D model. But if you do not, I'm going to show you how you can build the 3D template using a tracing of your frame. So I've got Microflash frame sitting down here on a piece of paper, and all I'm going to do is trace around it using a pen. Now, there are a few important notes for my robot that may apply to yours. If I get the backup frame of the robot and put it down, you probably can't tell exactly, but these bumpers are not the exact same size. So I have to consider that when making this 3D printed paint template. So what I'll have to do is basically make a paint template for the main body and then maybe have a few extra pieces that kind of snap on to the bumpers out here that are separate of that particular main template. Now also, I got a little block inside here that's sort of holding the bearing of the drive system that kind of helps take some of the load off the drive motors, the drive shafts, that kind of a thing as the robot gets thrown around. This sticks out a little bit from the base of the frame, so I need to make sure that I trace around this piece and not just purely the bottom of the frame. If I trace around the bottom of the frame, it's not going to fit right because, well, this piece would be in the way. So these extra lines that I drew here mark the position of bolts that are sticking up above the top of the frame. Now exactly how I deal with that is going to depend on if I want those bolts painted or not, but I just got to be aware they're there because therefore I don't accommodate for those bolts, a template can't sit flat on top of the robot's frame for painting. Now I'm inside Blender and I've scanned in my tracing along with a simple known object. In this case, I've got a US quarter. Now coins work really well for this process because what you're doing is by scanning in a known object, you can scale your image properly so that what you're working on in Blender is the right size of the thing in the real world. So a coin is a simple cylinder. In this case, the quarter is 24.26 millimeters in diameter. So I can add that via a new mesh. So what I can do now, take my reference image and I'll scale it up until the quarter is this particular size. So once it's the right size, know that any other models that I build here are going to be the correct real world size, or at least pretty darn close. The next step to creating the template is to go ahead and create some placeholders for these various bolts that I need to cut out. What I want to do is make sure my sizing is indeed correct. This is always helpful to do. So I'm going to create two new objects that more or less say match an area up here and then an area down here. I can 3D print those and then confirm on the robot frame whether they're the correct size or not. I got my two 3D printed guides. Let's try these out on the robot and make sure I got my sizing correct. Hmm. <laughs> Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can see that one there. It's a uh, a little big, a little big indeed. Let's try the other one and see how this one fits. Well, that one's also a little big. It seems like it's off by about the same scale. So clearly I got something wrong with my blender model. 
I'll have to figure out what that is, but let me figure out here how far I'm off and go from there. I'm off by about six millimeters. Hit the same, and then back here. Wow. Six, 12. Back here, I'm off by almost 18 millimeters. Okay, well, yeah, let's jump back to Blender and see what happened. Here's what I think happened. You always start with your reference, because that's, if that's off, then your entire model is going to be off. Now, if I click on my cylinder here, that's the reference of the quarter, it's correct, 24.3 um, millimeters. Yeah, I know it's meters there, but just, just trust me, it's just do the thing in your head and call it millimeters and meters for Blender for 3D printing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, um, but if I zoom in here, the quarter is actually a little bit too big. Maybe not by much, maybe a millimeter or two, but that's about a 4% increase in the size of my reference image. So let me start there. Let's fix that. It's a little bit difficult to get it perfect, but that's a lot closer. I am now going to create a second copy of this guy. We'll just drag it off the side here because I'm going to compare sizes later. And now let me realign this to the new one. Now I did model this to be a little bit too big intentionally, just that it had a little bit of play in the final piece, but obviously the four or six millimeters I had was too much. All right, let's try out the second set and see how things look this time. Okay, so the first one's a lot better and probably still a little big, but not by much, probably about half the distance this time. Which, like I said, I want a little bit of flexibility to there, so that's not super critical. And then the back one, well, about that. It's, it's off probably by about six millimeters still. So let me make another adjustment to my reference image and try this for a third time. Well, a third time's a charm. This piece, when you factor in the two bearing blocks, is about the right width. And this guy up here, within a millimeter or two, and that's where I want them to be. Okay, finally got the sizing down. Let's build the final paint template. So I've got my two guides here. I know they're the correct size in the robot, and I have scaled my reference image to match them, so I know the reference image is the correct size as well. So I'm going to start building the template that's going to be used for the painting process. Now it's time to actually design the shape of the various features we want on a robot. And of course for MicroFlash, it's going to have some red stripes as well as some blue highlights. I should be able to place this template over the robot and get a nice clean paint job. Now, because weird things happen, let's jump back into edit mode and we're going to find out if we have any non-manifold meshes, son of a I have my templates printed off and I'm just about ready to go. Uh, obviously I have to glue them together. And now the first step before gluing them together, I keep saying first step because I know it's like step 17, right? <laughs> um, I need to sand down the two edges that are going to glue together because 3D printing is very, very close to being accurate, but not like super tiny level accurate. So I want to make sure those two things are smooth. Otherwise they may not glue together very well. Now there's one more thing I forgot to deal with in the 3D model. Let me show you what that is right now. And that of course are the bumpers. Um, I knew that they were going to be an issue, but I didn't factor in them into the 3D model. So if I put this piece over top of the frame like I want to, obviously I can't go down because the bumpers are blocking some area. So what I need to do is cut some slots for the bumpers. <sighs> I 
Well, that squeaky obnoxious process is done. Let me get these few bits of things out of the way. Now the last step is to test fit the final templates and make sure they're good to go. I'm going to try them on both frames. So here's the production frame, or what I guess I'm going to call the production frame. Come on. Come on. There we go. That one's looking pretty good. Let's take these frames outside and give them their final coats of paint. And well, there you go. That is it for this process of how to make these 3D printed templates for your robot frames. Now you can go ahead and paint up all your robot frames so they look perfectly great to survive one battle in combat because, you know, let's be realistic. Paint jobs don't last too long. Actually, I can grab this right over here. It's sitting on the ground. This also involves some testing too. I tend to use my old frames for weapon testing. But yeah, you can see on the back of uh, what's left of the, this is a micro flash gamma frame, the paint job doesn't stick around very long. So, once again, I'm Jason, the creator of Team Rocker Robotics. If you like these kind of videos and want more robot stuff or cosplay or other robot stuff, in quotes there, because you know, I, I do talk about Battletech, now Warcaster, Neo Mechanica as well, and those kind of games, you can go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And of course, like, share, because that's what YouTube wants you to do. And if you do what YouTube wants you to do, it benefits me also. It's, huh, who would ever thought they'd come up with something like that? <laughs> All right, that's it for this time. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.